What if I were to tell you that mathematically, Tears of the Kingdom is going to win Game of the Year this week? Now, that sounds really crazy. We have the Game Awards coming up, and how can we use statistics and math to determine if it's going to win Game of the Year? If you want to go by Open Critic and Metascore, we could try to go with, like, get rid of the weighted systems and try to do fair ratings. And look, we're not here to do that. We know that this game and these awards are voted on by a panel of 120 outlets that make up 90 percent of the total value of vote for something like game of the year with 10 percent coming from fan vote and there are just going to be certain metrics we cannot measure but there is some fun stuff we can measure that shows that just from a pure math perspective Tears of the Kingdom may very well take Game of the Year. Now, there are a couple caveats we have to take in mind here that are going to make this seem like a fruitless exercise. And so I just want to note that this is more of a for fun video. I have no idea who's going to actually win Game of the Year. And the caveats are because this. The voting panel of 120 outlets, we don't know who they're putting on that panel. We don't know how they're going to handle those individual votes from the outlets. So we don't know how each outlet is individually managing how they're going to vote for things like Game of the Year. On top of that, there's a number of outlets that didn't review either game or any of the games up for Game of the Year, and we have no idea which way those outlets are going to lean. But I'm going to make a logic and mathematical-based argument here using real raw data that is going to seem absolutely insane. But this raw data cannot be denied. So as a fun thought exercise, I thought it would be cool to look at how Tears of the Kingdom just might win Game of the Year this year. Before I dive in, hey folks, why not go ahead and subscribe to the channel and get smacked in the face by a bunch of eggplants and Oreos? You know, you get a little healthy, you get a little unhealthy, you also might get a little nasty. Don't ask me. You decide what to do with all those eggplant scenarios. All right, so let's just get serious for a moment and dive into the math. There's this really neat uh, game of the year tracker that somebody put together. I can't remember who it is. We'll put a image on screen uh, crediting the person who sent this to me. So let's go ahead and put this up and you guys can see what we're looking at here. So this is a nice little goatee tracker and you'll see that this deals with the scoring, the predictions, the 2018, the old, all right? So first, you can get into a few things, and we need to determine that this is really a two-horse race. It's between Tears of the Kingdom, which you can see listed right in this column, and Baldur's Gate 3. And what we're seeing here is what the different outlets that are up for uh, awards voted. So as an example, Digital Trends gave Baldur's Gate 3 a 100. They gave Tears of the Kingdom a 90. So chances are they're going to choose Baldur's Gate 3 as their game of the year. But then you see an interesting one where uh, Tears of the Kingdom was given a 95 by Easy Allies. Baldur's Gate 3 didn't get reviewed at all. Then they also gave Resident Evil 4 Remake a 100. So you could maybe figure Easy Allies would probably vote Game of the Year as Resident Evil 4 Remake. However, we don't know if Easy Allies considers this game a goatee contender. Why? Because it's a remake. So we don't know. This, this is where we get into the caveats of we don't know, but let's just presume their highest review game is going to be the one they vote for. Then we get down to, say, Entertainment Weekly, and this is where we see none of the games got reviews. So again, we don't know what they're going to vote for. But when you look at all of this, you'll see Game of War with a 98 for Tears of the Kingdom, 95 here. Nothing else is higher. They're probably voting Tears of the Kingdom. GameSpot, we don't know. They gave out four 100s. Uh, Giant Bomb didn't review Baldur's Gate 3 or Tears of the Kingdom. They only reviewed one of the games. That probably will be the game they vote for. We don't know. Same for IGN. Look at, we don't really know which one they're going to vote for. Same for Inverse between four of five here. We don't know what they're really going to vote for. And then you'll see a couple where they didn't review uh, you know, Tears of the Kingdom because PC Gamer, obviously not a thing like that. Game Rant as well didn't. They reviewed a lot of them. For some reason, they didn't review Tears of the Kingdom. But it goes the other way as well. Well, you see VG 24-7 uh, reviewed Tears of the Kingdom but did not view Bald review Baldur's Gate 3. But then they also reviewed all these other ones. And you see they like to hand out a lot of 10 out of 10s. Same with VG Chronicle. And let's say it's between these two. Well, again, you'll see here that, you know, Baldur's Gate 3 didn't get reviewed. So you're going to see this several times. Again, not reviewed here by Stevover. So then you're going to see that Tears of the Kingdom probably has an advantage there. Same here with The Enemy. Power Limited reviewed both, and it looks like it's going to be going to 
there. But you can go down this list, and I'm going to link to this down below if you guys want to look at it, and just take a look at it. And really, it's the end of the list where things get interesting. So as you can see, between the two games that are the league contender for game of the year, 47 of the actual 120 outlets gave Tears of the Kingdom a score. 41 gave Baldur's Gate a score. So we have actual reviews for these two games. Of the scores, 27 of them were perfect 100s for Tears of the Kingdom. Only 20 of them were perfect 100s for Baldur's Gate 3. And you see this is well ahead of all of the other games in the category. For 90+, plus, 44 gave Tears of the Kingdom a 90+, plus, 39. And this makes it a bit closer, gave Baldur's Gate a 90 or above. All right. And then we see one outlet put it down in 0 to 79 for Baldur's Gate 3. If you look at this pure math, and again, there's so many numbers we don't know because, again, over, over half the outlets don't even review games or have game reviews. It looks like from a mathematical perspective, these are all of the outlets that are part of the voting jury that Tears of the Kingdom has a literal statistical advantage. And I'm going to give some more context. All right. Baldur's Gate 3 is deserving of Game of the Year. I think Spider-Man 2 is deserving of Game of the Year. I think almost every game up for Game of the Year is deserving. Yes, I'm biased, and I love Zelda, and I want Tears of the Kingdom to win selfishly because it is my favorite game I have played this year. But here's the thing. I do think of the outlets that don't review games, the voting panel, and we're seeing this just in the raw facts that Tears of the Kingdom was reviewed by more of these outlets than Baldur's Gate 3. What we're seeing is it is far more likely all these other outlets that don't do game reviews that they have played Zelda rather than playing Baldur's Gate 3. That's where I'm arguing that Tears of the Kingdom actually has a math Medical advantage, not just in the raw data we actually have, but if you just think about it from a logical perspective, Tears of the Kingdom has sold three to four times more copies than Baldur's Gate 3 has. Tears of the Kingdom is a known property from Zelda coming off one of the biggest Zelda games of all time. I think it is much more likely, as we go back to this list, that a place like the LA Times has more than likely played Tears of the Kingdom, but hasn't played Baldur's Gate 3. And you can go up and down this list. The Verge is more than likely have played Tears of the Kingdom than they have Baldur's Gate 3. Variety Magazine, same way. Wired Magazine, probably the same way. Tech Studio, Tech Masters, Terra Game On, Voxel, you know, CBC. A lot of these outlets, to me, there's a much grander chance that they actually played Tears of the Kingdom than they played Baldur's Gate 3. Now, that doesn't mean they're going to give Tears of the Kingdom the award because they could vote for Spider-Man or vote for one of the many other games up for the awards. But I just think that Tears of the Kingdom has a mathematical advantage. And as such, I'm actually going in to the Game Awards with the expectation that Tears of the Kingdom is going to take it. I know the fan vote is going to be what it is, and maybe it leans towards Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, here's the thing. This isn't a weighted jury. Every vote from every outlet counts the same in that 90%. I just think there's such a higher chance that so many of these outlets that don't review games actually played Zelda compared to, compared to a CRPG that I just think Zelda has a natural advantage and natural brand recognition that's going to carry it all the way to the title. Now, I could be wrong, and again, this isn't meant to be like a, this is definitively what's going to happen, and Baldur's Gate 3, to me, is a massively deserving game for game of the year, but I'm just pointing out that I do think that it's much more likely that not only do these outlets actually own a Nintendo Switch, that they played Tears of the Kingdom. So, I don't know. You guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Sort of a prediction, but a mathematical one, and we'll see what happens. Thank you guys for being here, and I'll catch you in the next video.